Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying. It was a long time ago. And we're live. You in the most location ever. Yeah, I did. I've done some weird things. I've worked a lot of jobs. Anyways, we're live. What? We what? are live. I don't care. We're live. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Pastor Doug. Right this now. is Rowan. Tonight, we're reading from First Chronicles chapter 13. Welcome to a moment of joy. We, he we, was just telling me about how crazy he was in a commercial kitchen. That's okay. It was a long time ago. We'll talk about it later. A long time ago? What was that, like 10 years ago? No, it was like 25. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, and no, now, now I feel old. You Thanks. are old. Anyways, let's get back you're to like it. You're like seventy-two. I am not seventy-two. You're seventy-two. Okay, tonight we're reading from First Chronicles chapter thirteen. Get your head in the game. No. First Chronicles comes after Second Kings and before Second Chronicles. It's about a third of the way into your Bible if you want to read along at home. This is a really special passage. We'll talk about it after we get done. Okay. David conferred with each of the the officers and commanders of thousands, commanders of hundreds. And he said to the whole assembly of Israel, If it seems good to you, and if it's the will of the Lord our God, let us send word far and wide to the rest of our people throughout the territories of Israel. And also to the priests and Levites who are with them in their towns and pasture lands to come and join us. Let us bring the ark of our God back to us. For we did not inquire of it during the reign of Saul. The whole assembly agreed to do this because it seemed right to all the people. So David assembled all Israel from Shiloh River in Egypt to Lebo Hamoth to bring the ark of the God, uh, the ark of God from Kirith Jerim. David and all Israel went to Bala of Judah, which is Kirth Jerim, to bring up from there the ark of God, the Lord, who was enthroned between the cherubim, the ark that is called by the name. They moved the ark of God from Abinadab's house on a new cart, with Uzzah and Aho guarding it. David and all the Israelites were celebrating with all their might before God with songs and harps and lyres and timbrels and cymbals and trumpets. When they came to the threshing floor of Kedon Uzzah, no, when they came to the threshing floor of Kedon, Uzzah reached out his hand to study the ark because the oxen stumbled. The Lord's anger burned against Uzzah, and he struck him down because he had put his hand on the ark. So he died there before God. Then David was angry because of the Lord's wrath had broken out against Uzzah. And to this day, the place is called Perez Uzzah. David was afraid of God that day and asked, How can I ever bring the ark of God? How can I ever bring the ark of God to me? He did not take the ark to be with him in the city of David. Instead, he took it to the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite. The ark of God remained with the family of Obed-Edom in his house for three months and the Lord blessed his house and everything he had. Any questions? About the passage. Yeah, why'd you cut uh, Never mind. Yeah. About the passage. No. Okay. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just want to be annoying. Okay, so this was not the passage I thought it was but this is also a very important passage as well. Um, why do you think God struck that guy down and killed him? Um, I don't know. I think he was not respecting the ark. He wasn't respecting the way that it was supposed to be done. But it's interesting that the, the way that they're moving the ark, like on a cart with oxen, that's not how God said to move the ark. Yeah, I thought it was like... But, you know who did move the ark that way? The Philistines. So obviously that's where David learned it from, instead of learning it the the proper way from the scriptures, right? Yeah. So I thought it was like two people 
buried it. Um, was it four feet short? I think it. Yeah, I think it's. Because yeah. I know it, it. It was like a box that had like four handles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think. Even though it was like two. People together, I, they both uh, well, we'll we'll have to we'll have to wait and see in the next day or two. They 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 look it up and they check her out and they do her right. So we'll wait and see and we'll find out because it's not just any people. There's certain people too. So we'll we'll learn all about it. But anyways, um, God makes rules for a reason, and yes, we don't live under the law anymore. I mean, we we're, we're free. We're saved by by grace, through faith alone in Jesus. Now we don't have to follow these rules, but that doesn't mean that that these rules are bad, and it doesn't mean that they're not helpful. You know, the Bible tells us the right way to live, and we got to live that way for a reason. Anyways, let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you give us. We thank you for your word. We thank you that we can learn from it. We pray that we put it into practice and we live it. We don't just read it, but we live it. So we pray in Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, we will see you tomorrow evening at 8.30. Actually, no, you won't see me. I, um... I will either be at the music or most likely I won't even be at the music yet. At eight, well, yeah, I should be back by then. I also have to go and uh, do a, a wedding rehearsal for a, a couple that's getting married this weekend. I have to do that tomorrow evening as well. So Rowan will be be reading Moment of Joy tomorrow. It's a short one. You'll be fine. Um, no, so. I actually have to start going back to bed at 8 so I can get ready. To yeah, to no. School, even though I can't Rowan will be doing uh, uh, Moment of Joy tomorrow. All right. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Depends how long it is. See you tomorrow evening for another moment of joy. Goodbye.